Guys, I don't know what it is about the autumn months when I like to switch gears a bit and switch from drinking coffee to tea. Something about tea is really, really calming and relaxing, even though it has that boost of caffeine. It's the same thing with the fragrances as well. I like to pull for tea fragrances during the autumn or fall months because they do have a very calming and cozy, you know, Thing about them. So in today's video, I'm doing a ranking of 21 different tea fragrances from the most cozy to the least cozy because there are some tea fragrances that I don't find as cozy even though I really enjoy them. And because I like tea fragrances because they're cozy, some I don't consider cozy. So find out about them coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yesterday we're talking about tea fragrances, cozy tea fragrances, calming, comforting. Do you enjoy wearing tea fragrances? Do you enjoy drinking tea? What do you guys think? What are your favorite tea to drink? And also what kind of uh, tea fragrances do you like to wear? And uh, what are some of your tea fragrances? Put a comment down below. Uh, recently I received a comment on a past tea fragrances video and the comment said, I don't understand why you didn't include this fragrance. Well, let me tell you guys, I don't own every single fragrance in the world. I'm sorry if I don't feature a fragrance you love. You're never gonna be satisfied 100%. Like I said, I don't have every single tea fragrance here. And if I did, this list will be 100. But either way, I've got 21 fragrances here, as I said, ranked from most cozy to least cozy. And after the outro, I have some bonus options that are less expensive. All of them are $100 or under. So we'll start with the first one. Going to a fairly new house. I did a video on this house. You can go catch the video. It's a house called Voyage Imaginaire. It's tea and rock and roll. So in the list, I find this one to be the coziest out of all of them. Something about this fragrance smells so, so delicious. First of all, it has bergamot tea, smoky mate, tonka beans for notes, and the combination is just really, really a calming experience. Everything is so smooth. It's perfectly layered together with a little bit of tartness from the bergamot, the, you know, the citrus touches, the tea. I've had bergamot tea, don't you? Typically with Earl Grey, there's a bergamot quality about it. And I like that in that tea. And I think you get that here as well. It's slightly sweet, not overly sweet, but just the right amount of calmingness and the citrusy sweetness and floral touches of the bergamot. It's absolutely fantastic. So if you've noticed, I'm starting with the, the my, I wouldn't call this my favorite, but as I said, this is the most cozy out of all of them. It's tea and rock and roll from the house of Voyage Imaginaire. Just as also something additional information for that fragrance, they're 100% natural. So if you like the idea of not wearing any synthetics, look into that house. I have a full video on that house. Go catch that video. But moving on to another fragrance from a house called Obvious Parfums. This is Un Ete. This one right here. So this one is matcha and mate, slightly sweetened up and kind of creamy, made creamy. And it's just like adding this creamy layer to fragrances gives you even further boost of cozy calmness. I find lactonic fragrances to be uber cozy and calming, and this one has that going for it. Sure, tea fragrances are going to be on the green side, but something about tea fragrances and the drink itself, tea itself, I just find the whole experience very cozy, very calming, very soothing, and that's what I like about it. In the autumn, you're tired after the summer months, you want some relaxation, and I think the autumn months are perfect because the, the weather outside is a bit cold, and you can drink this warm tea just to give you this soothing, you know, feeling about it. And I get that from this fragrance because it has all these wonderful citrusy notes, the greenness of the matcha, the mate, some sweetness from vanilla. There's some zinc from ginger and a bit of a floral touch from the orange flower. Fantastic fragrance. This is Unete from the House of Obvious Parfums. So we've got two fragrances in a row here that are tied from the same house. It's Wulong Cha from Nishane and Wulong Cha X from Nishane. So they're a bit different. In the end, they're both the same fragrance. It's a 10 year anniversary of the brand for the Wulong Cha X and it has this boost of magnolia in it. So it gives you a bit of a more floral edge to it. But the original fragrance is super, super fantastic. Wonderful idea. You can go with either one, you know. If you want one with a bit more floral touch, you can go with the Wulong Cha X. If you want the original, just all 
tea and citruses and fruitiness and flowers and things like that, you would go with the original because I think it's a really, really fantastic fragrance. It's funny though, it was a late discovery for me for this fragrance because I was obsessed with Ombra Calabria and I get some sort of similarities between the two fragrances. But in the end, this is a great tea fragrance from this house. And as I said, now you've got two different versions or variations of the same fragrance. You can go with one that has a bit more floral boost to it or go with the original for a full-on cozy tea experience. So it's Wulong Cha, Wulong Cha X Tide from the house of Nishane. Then I was bringing up some lactonic fragrances, milky fragrances. We're going to the house of Javoy. It's Remember Me, this one right here. Super, super lactonic. This is definitely a chai tea latte experience. One of the best fragrances that Cecile Zorokian has created. It's absolutely delicious. I love it. And it has major, major cozy characteristic. It really soothes when you wear this one. The milkiness, the sweet vanilla touches, the tea, the cardamom, the ginger, all of it. This beautiful concoction of notes. And it's a basically a chai tea latte kind of experience with the milkiness and every other ingredient that goes in to create the, the tea, the chai tea that is known throughout the world. Super, super amazing, lactonic, spicy, tea, cozy fragrance. This Remember Me from the House of Javoy. Absolutely love it. Then going to the House of Memo Paris. It's Winter Palace, this one right here. This turns out to be one of my favorite fragrances from this house, absolutely love it. And the idea is really, really wonderful. It's once again a bit on the gourmand side. You've got this tea, the Asian tea experience with these really beautiful, very flavorful almond cookies that you get in Chinatown. And that's what I get with this fragrance. Really, the combination is really great. You also have vanillic balsamic touches here, but it's boosted up with all kinds of citruses. There's orange tea here. The orange is really wonderful with the tea. And then you've got bergamot, benzoin. So there's definitely ambery touches here. And then, of course, it uh, gets resinous and balsamics and balsamic in the end. But for me, as I was saying, I get a bit of an almondy edge and it's almost like you're having this really wonderful Asian or Chinese tea nibbling on these little almond cookies. Super, super delicious, really great winter palace. Probably one of my favorite fragrances from that house. It's Memo Paris, super delicious. And speaking of Memo Paris, we've got its sister house here. It's a Floraiku with one umbrella for two. This one also is kind of like a tea service. You're at an English tea service here and you're having tea and having like these little nibbly cookies and things like that. You've got black currant here, tea and cedar, but for some reason there's definitely this kind of blueberry touch in this fragrance. It's almost like blueberry scones you're eating, you know? They used to be, like in the 90s and 2000s, I was really obsessed with blueberry scones. I'd have them with coffee, not tea. And it's a really delicious delicacy. And here with this one, you're kind of getting that idea when you're wearing this fragrance because there's definitely this kind of blueberry vibe, even though it's black currant that we're talking about that's in here. But really, really wonderful fragrance. Really super smooth, really super cozy. Fragrances from this house do happen to have that kind of refined coziness about them. And uh, that why, that's why they are really, really wonderful wearing experiences. So this is One Umbrella for Two from the house of Floraiku. Let me know if you're a fan of that house. Do let me know, put a comment down below. Moving on to the house of Estee Lauder in their luxury collection of fragrances. This is Tender Light, this one right here. Do you guys know this collection? Would you like me to do a video on this collection? I have most all of them, not all of them yet. I'd like to acquire all of them or buy all of them and then do a video on the collection, but they do have some really great fragrances. I can't remember who the perfumer of this one is, but there's fragrances by Quinton Biche, Dominique Ropion, and so on. But you know what? This one to me is so smooth, very ethereal, very airy, floaty. There's a bit of a powdery edge about this because it's got Tuscan Iris, but there's a Chinese tea accord along with bergamot. Really a wonderful offering. If you like clean, light, airy, ethereal, cozy, smooth fragrances, try Tender Light. And you know what? The name is very, very appropriate for this. Tender Light and that wears like that. It's this bright light, very tender on you when you wear it. So it's Tender Light from the house of Estee Lauder. I think that collection is fairly solid. It's just not very hyped. Estee Lauder has an old thing about them. Maybe it doesn't appeal to younger people. I love Estee Lauder because I love some of their classic fragrances. And I think this uh, luxury collection is fairly uh, decent. Uh, so hopefully I'll do a video on that collection soon. But moving on to the house of the 
House of Oud. This is the, it's confusing, is it tea time or the time? But this is it right here. It's a tea fragrance and a beautiful bottle. Usually this company does really, or the brand does really great looking bottles. And the time or tea time is super cozy and delicious with tea, mate, lemongrass, chamomile, bergamot, iris, wormwood, amber, cedar, and musk. In the end, it's this super cozy tea fragrance, but you've got other things happening in here. It's a bit grassy with the lemon. There's a lemony touch about it, but in the end, it's a bit more aromatic and herbal at the same time. The chamomile even further gives you this very soothing, relaxing vibe about it. And then the wormwood adds a bit of greenness, a little light booziness in this, more in the spice direction but once again it's a super amazing smelling very very cozy comforting tea fragrance called tea time or the time it's from the house of the house of oud and uh, a wonderful offering but moving on to a house called kiran nyc it's sunday brunch this one right here really absolutely love the name for this one and it's appealing although most people that go to sunday brunch here in the states probably have coffee versus tea but uh, I, I love tea and coffee to begin with and I feel like the idea is captured here maybe it's Sunday brunch in the UK where there's more tea drinkers there but for me this is very very cozy and really wonderful a bit floral citrusy lots of citrusy actually and an overdose of tea here I feel like it's black tea versus uh, you know green tea you get the differences you can definitely get to recognize the differences when you're actually smelling you know black tea fragrances versus fragrances that feature uh, green tea and things like that especially if you also know the flavor of those things but this one to me is super, super cozy, really wonderful. Not a house that I really am familiar with too much, but uh, this is one of their best, I think, this uh, Sunday brunch and uh, with a really great name. So it's Kirin NYC Sunday brunch, really cozy fragrance. Moving on to the house of Wilhelm Parfumery. This is Dear Polly, this one right here. This is a very popular fragrance. Uh, from this house, I should say, and I think there's a reason why. I think it's just really a well-rounded tea fragrance. It's got all the things going for it and a bit of fruitiness thrown in, some light bit of classic undertones there as well when the fragrance is drying down. This is black tea. You can totally recognize this black tea compared to other fragrances that have green tea. And then there's the bergamot. And the bergamot and, and the black tea, or like in some cases, Earl Grey tea, really do go wonderfully together. If you've ever opened up a fresh canister of Earl Grey tea, the fragrance is so amazing. And here you kind of get that with this one with a bit of a fruity edge. And of course, some musk and amber and oak moss in the dry down. The fragrance is really fantastic. Really love it. And you know, I do enjoy the fragrances from this house there is definitely a dna flowing from one to the other and it's because the perfumer they use most of the fragrances are created by the same perfumer jerome mepine although lately they've been doing other perfumers but there is a dna you can really recognize it kind of like byredo because it's the same perfumer and from one fragrance to another you get to recognize their DNA. But this is definitely very, very smooth and cozy. It's Dear Polly from the House of Wilhelm Parfumery. And uh, that is uh, at number 10. So the next one, we're going to the House of uh, Maison Margiela. This is Matcha Meditation. This one right here, sort of kind of similar to the idea of Un Ute. Un ete, uh, I should say not un ute, un ete. Matcha meditation is kind of more of a floral take on un ete with an overdose of jasmine. There's a lot of jasmine here. So some people like jasmine, some people don't. It's kind of you know, giving you a floral edge to this kind of white chocolate creaminess, but almost like there's that jasmine that's super dosed in here creates a bit of a soapy undertone here with this creaminess because you know soap is kind of creamy when you're lathering and things like that and the fact that there's that jasmine in there gives you a bit of a soapy edge but still very cozy very uh, comforting uh, fragrance with green tea jasmine there's mate orange blossom of course the white chocolate moss cedar and bergamot created by Maurice Roussel. I think he did a great job with it. It's just the different direction this house was going versus something like Unete from Obvious Parfums, but really great ex execution. But I find the Unete a bit more cozy because it's a lot smoother. And this jasmine note in this just gives you a bit of like more excitement, whether it's not calming, more like energetic kind of a thing. So matcha meditation from the house of the Maison Margiela. Then moving on to the house called 
Parfum de Nikolai. This is Fig Tea, this one right here. I wanted to think that this was going to be a lot cozier, but in the end it ended up here. I was going through the fragrances and somehow it ended up on this section. It's definitely a very vibrant tea fragrance and I feel like it's all the fruity notes in this to give you more of an uplifting rather than calming smooth soothing kind of an experience makes sense it's got osmanthus which is a tea in the end it's a flower that is drunk as a tea but it has this fruity apricotty kind of undertones then there's fig fruit there's mate artemisia coriander and jasmine for me it's a very exciting fun playful kind of a tea fragrance rather than something that you can relax with sit on your couch in front of a fire read a book or listen to some music or something but in the end it's a fun playful fragrance is it fig is it tea what is it it's both actually so it's fig tea from the house of Parfums de Nicolai. Then we're going to the house of Comme des Garçons. This is Nomad Tea, this one right here. Any of you familiar with this one? So this one also a bit of excitement here. So I think we're getting to a point where it's not as smooth and cozy and comforting. Things are getting to be a little more playful. Maybe at the end it's going to get a lot smoky and things like that because tea does get smoky. Here it's just a very sugary take on tea. Sweet and mint tea at the same time. It's got mint tea sugar. There's artemisia. There's woodsy notes. There's geranium. So aromatics. Lots of woody characteristics. A bit greenness and herbal touches from the artemisia. The this tea is sweetened up with the sugar and then it's got mint in there as well. When I was growing up, my grandmother used to drink mint tea. It's tea with mint and then some lemons in there. This one, in this fragrance, there's no lemony touches, but it was that kind of idea that always brings to mind when I see mint and tea together, something my grandmother used to have. But wonderful fragrance this is from Comme des Garçons. It's a nomad tea and uh, try that one if you haven't tried it. It's in a collection called uh, li uh, olfactory library from uh, Comme des Garçons. So they used to be in other collections and then they discontinued and they brought all their popular ones and put it in the olfactory library. Next up going to a house called State of Mind. This is Aesthetic Turbulence, this one right here. So State of Mind is a very interesting house that has uh, all their fragrances. It's inspired by tea and their boxes come like this with a canister, a tea canister, and the bottles fit inside of it, If in case you don't know. So they're all tea focused, and I feel like aesthetic turbulence is probably the most tea inspired, because everyone has tea in it as a note, but for me I feel like this is all about the tea rather than those, kind of the tea might be a bit of an afterthought. So it's a great tea fragrance, but some excitement is in here as well. It's green tea pearls with oolong tea, immortel, pink pepper, mandarin, in licorice, labdanum, and jasmine. The oolong tea for me is always adding smokiness to fragrances. Definitely has a tea vibe for sure, but there's a smoky undertone about it. And this one is not necessarily the, the most coziest. It can be to some people. I'm just thinking when I was ranking the fragrances against every one of them, this one ended up at this spot. But it's a really, really smooth ride for sure. It's tea all the way. So we've got the green tea and the oolong tea. You've got some uh, licorice -y touches in here. Very much lots of spices. Eventually it becomes ambery when it's drying down. And then last but not least, you've got a bit of a caramelly touch from the Immortel note. But a really great fragrance. I want to dig into this house state of mind. This is Aesthetic Turbulence. That is at number 14. And then we're moving on to the house of uh, eccentric molecules. It's molecule one plus black tea. And this black tea does seem a bit dark and smoky. That's why it's here at number 15. Uh, but, you know, a really great fragrance. Really love this. The idea of molecule one, the ISO's E Super, which is the synthetic note that smells like cedar sandalwood meshed with the black tea. That's a great, great combination. And if you have a tea fragrance that you think is not necessarily performing, I think I would layer it with this one. But keep in mind, this does get smoky. So if you're wearing something that's smooth and very cozy, and this one gives you a bit of a boost of this dark smokiness, uh, keep that in mind. But if you like the idea, you can do that because it'll intensify the fragrance, make it last longer. But on its own, it's a great minimalistic wear, just ISOE Super, which is basically cedar sandalwood and the black tea together, wonderful combination. So Molecule 1 plus Black Tea uh, by Eccentric Molecules at number 15. Then moving on to the house of Dorsey, Dorsey Paris or Dorsey Parfums. This is Dandy or Not GA. So now we're getting into fragrances that are not necessarily super cozy. This one's inspired by dandyism. And of course, the brand's owner 
in the past was the original Dandy, and so this one has some exciting things happening to it, utilizing the note of black tea, but you've got orange blossom here, leather accord, cedar, patchouli, cardamom, and grapefruit. In the end, it's cozy, but it has all these notes that are not necessarily going to make the fragrance really cozy, if that makes sense. It does get very leathery, and it has all these earthy notes and things and spices as well, but super great fragrance from the house of uh, Dorsey. This is Dandy or Not GA. One of my favorite tea fragrances is next, but unfortunately I don't find it to be super cozy because it has tobacco and a lot of like these very warm spicy spices. It's Tea for Two from the House of L'Artisan Parfumer, one of my all-time favorites. And it's the tobacco also. The tobacco in here gives you a bit of an edge where it's not really super relaxing, but it's tea, tobacco, cinnamon spices, honey, ginger, star anise, gingerbread, leather, vanilla, and bergamot. One of the best, best fragrances from this house. It's smells super fantastic. It's gourmand, but it's tobacco, it's spices, it's holidays, all of that come to mind here. Tea for two. I think it would make a great fragrance for Thanksgiving Day. Then one of the fragrances that was recently featured in my Scent Club kit number five, it's Oolong Tea from One Day. So Oolong Tea does have a lot of smoke. I used to drink, there was a time I was drinking Oolong Tea quite a bit. I was obsessed with tea drinking and the one of the styles I started, uh, you know, doing was oolong tea uh, and I remember drinking it there was a lot of smoke in it and this one does get smoky and also a bit ashy tobacco as well but it does dry down to become very very super cozy with the tea the oolong tea but it's bergamot with clary sage oolong tea leaf honey jasmine vetiver and tonka beans and don't forget the jasmine this one does have a super amped up jasmine note in here as well so it's the oolong tea and the jasmine together but that oolong tree tea has that smoke so there's there's a bit of a, ja um, a tobacco-ish vibe in there as well. So Oolong Tea from One Day, really wonderful offering. And then uh, second to the last fragrance, it's Russian Tea from the House of Mask Milano, created by Julianne Rascone. And again, now we're getting really dark and smoky here with black tea. There's lots of leather here. There's mint, birchwood, and this is creating smoke. Incense, raspberry, everlasting flower, which is immortel, black pepper, cystus labdanum, magnolia. So it's a smooth ride, but smoky touches all the way through. The birchwood is giving, gonna give you this kind of smoky, leathery accents in the fragrance. You got some fruitiness in in there as well, spices, just a very, very dark, smoky black tea experience called uh, Russian Tea from the House of Mask Milano, created by Julianne Rascone. That is at number 19. And we're gonna end the list with the least cozy, it's Mixed Emotions from the House of Byredo. So this one was a bit off-putting when I first started wearing it, but my nose got used to it. Now I do experience some of its cozy qualities because in the end it is mate, it's green tea-ish kind of experience. But yeah, some people that sm smell this for the first time, it is a bit off-putting. I don't know what it is, but you get used to it. And I actually really do enjoy it, but still, I put it here at the last. It's the least cozy out of all of them, but I do enjoy this one. If you do enjoy this one, do let me know. Mixed Emotions from Byredo. If you don't enjoy it, also let me know. It might come off a bit like cat piss, unfortunately. That's what I was getting when I first started wearing it but I really do like that one now, really do. I don't know if it's super cozy, but still enjoy that fragrance. Anyway, that's the list for you guys today. What are your thoughts on these fragrances? Do you enjoy them? Anything that I've left out, again, keep in mind, I don't own everything. So if I've left something off that you're a fan of, I'm sorry, I don't currently have it. Maybe in the future I'll get it. But let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. Let me know what I should look into in the future. Stay tuned for the bonus content with the fragrances under $100. And thank you so much for watching today's video. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. And some bonus options for you. We're going to the house of Bulgari with their Te Blanc. I've left off Te Vert because it's very, very popular and it's not one of my favorites. Te Blanc is so, so cozy. Really, really love the coziness about this one. It's really super smooth and really great to, to wear. And you can find us at the discounters for under $100. Look around, I think you'll see them at the discounters. But it's tea, musk, black pepper, artemisia. There's woods notes, orange blossom, bergamot, jasmine, cardamom, bitter orange, coriander, amber rose. I absolutely love this one. I would just drizzle myself with this stuff. It's really super relaxing. So that's Tay Blanc from the house of uh, Bulgari. There's one fragrance I haven't pulled here. It's Assam of India from the house of Berdu. Really great cozy kind of orangey take on tea 
It says lemons for the notes, but I get an orange vibe, orange tea vibe. I used to drink that for a bit when I was much younger. And that's the kind of vibe I get with that one. And still under $100. It's super cozy and creamy smooth with the sandalwood in that note. Next, going to a house called Maison Matin. This is Warney Warney, this one right here. Once again, we've got tea. There's orange blossom, cardamom, freesia, musk, coumarin, and cedar. This one seems a bit unusual and a bit experimental, but still utilizing notes that I would find cozy. And again, it's under $100 as well from a very underrated house with a really unique looking bottle uh, labels, as you can see here. Uh, check that out if you don't know it. The next one is uh, from the house of J Scent. It's roasted green tea, this one right here. I've mentioned in many videos, this is such a cozy tea fragrance, but for some reason I can't get past the top notes. I, I mean, I do, but there's something a bit fleshy when you first spray it, almost like, like meat or fish flesh kind of a thing. It's a bit weird, but then it becomes this most amazing cozy vanilla tea, smooth, cozy tea fragrance. Really wonderful offering, but uh, it's a bit challenging to get through the first spray. I don't know what it is. Maybe you guys don't experience it. Let me know though. It's J Scent uh, green, Roasted Green Tea, but it's tea with vanilla, coconut, peanuts, iris, jasmine, mint, and cedar. Let me know if you're a fan of that house. And the last but not least, probably the cheapest fragrance on this whole list. It's green tea from Elizabeth Arden. You can probably find this for $15 for a 100 ml. Uh, it's a fragrance created by Francis Kirkjian of Maison Francis Kirkjian. And uh, it's been reformulated. It's watered down, but as a, like a liberally spraying kind of a dumb reach fragrance, perhaps after a shower, this stuff smells great. Really, really super cozy. And if it's not performing for you, it is a lot smooth here compared to this. Like I was saying, you can actually layer this down, let it dry. It's the ISOE Super uh, with uh, black tea from uh, eccentric molecules. So it's molecule one plus black tea. So it's basically ISOE Super and black tea. Spray that first, let it dry, and then spray the green tea on top. What I would do is double or triple the sprays of the green tea from Elizabeth Arden in comparison to the Molecule 1 plus black tea because it's a lot more stronger than this. Plus it's darker and smokier. So it's I think you can extend the life of the green tea a lot. But for a cheapie, I think definitely worth getting and having in your collection because it only costs like 15 or so dollars. So that's green tea from the house of Elizabeth Arden. And that is the last fragrance for you guys. See you guys later. Bye.